One of the most common scenarios for people who are in school is that they will study for a test. They will do everything in their power to do well on that test. They will go to the class, they will take the test, and they will fail. And sometimes they fail hard. I have failed hard. I have had some really bad grades. And maybe you have too. But there is a way to avoid that. And it's to dig deep. What do I mean by digging deep? Well, when people would come to me after failing a test in my class, I would tell them, well, hey, did you go over the notes? Did you go over the homework? Did you go over the review if we had an exam review? And usually I would have some type of exam review for my students. I believe in reviews. I think it's good to you know, go over and summarize all the material because people latch onto that. You know, If you give people a review, if you say, hey, you need to know all of these theorems and all of these examples, and then on the test, you know, it's not the same problems, but it's the same ideas. People will latch onto that and they will study and they will give it their 100% and they will do well. But that's besides the point. Those students who would come to my office who failed, I would tell them, you know, did you do the homework? Did you, you know, go over your notes? Did you go over the review? Most of the time, they would say no to one of those three things. That means that they didn't dig deep. So think about that, right? If, you, if you're taking a class and you're not doing well, are you digging deep enough? You know, are you going through all of the homework problems, right? I mean, making sure that you can do every single one. Now, it's not just about looking at the problem and saying, yeah, I can do this problem. Because when your mind, when your mind is telling you that you know the information, that doesn't mean you know the information. You actually have to physically take it to the next level. You actually have to pick up a pencil, right? You have to pick up a pencil, sit down, and write down that problem and actually do that problem with your hands. You have to use your hands, right? Do the math problem. That's how you know. That's how you know you know how to do the problem. That's the difference between people who succeed and people who fail many, many times. And I learned this the hard way, right? It was really hard because I failed a bunch of tests. You know, I've, I've taken way too many math classes. <laughs> I've taken a lot of math. I've taken four advanced statistics classes. It's, it's ridiculous. And I've struggled. So I, I, I've gotten to the point where I know if I know the material, you know, I, I can look at a math book and I can see a section or a chapter and I can say, mm, I know most of that, but I don't know all of it. I'm a little sketchy. I'd probably have to go back and reread it and do a couple problems to really, you know, solidify my mind. But I think a lot of people, you know, they haven't gotten there yet. They haven't gotten there. So when you're studying, when you're trying to learn a new topic and, and, and you think you know it, remember that your mind is not really, you know, your thoughts aren't really correct a lot of times. You, you really need to actually physically do the problem, work out the solution without looking at your resources, right? Without looking at your notes. Can you physically do the math and write it down on a piece of paper? Not just like, oh, this, these are the steps. No, actually, you know, get the pencil moving. One of the things I used to tell people when they, when, when they would get stuck on problems, it's, it's something I heard from a professor I used to have as an undergraduate, um, really wonderful man. He died a long time ago. Great guy. Uh, he helped me learn to write proofs. He would come into class and he would say, I anoint you. I, I don't know what that meant, but he would say that. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like this guy cares about us, you know? And he always, was, he always would say to us, you know, when you're stuck, just get the pencil moving, right? Get the pencil moving. Try Write something down because a lot of time it's that, it's that physical action that you take that can help you know get you going literally and it's the same thing when you when you think you understand you know if you're looking at a math book and you're going over your homework problems you're studying for a test and you think you know it you think you understand it you might not you might know it you might know it there's, there's a chance you might know it but i would say maybe 40 percent of the time I, you might not right you might not it just it just depends so don't leave anything to chance especially if you're in college or in high school and, and you're taking a test right I mean, grades aren't everything, but they do matter, right? And it's your life. This is the only one you have, right? I mean, if you're in a math class today, let's say you're in a Calculus 1 class today. You're in Calculus 1 right now. Let's pretend you are. You're probably not going to be in Calculus 1 in 30 years, right? This is your time. This is now. 
you, you know, this is your opportunity to do well. So you should take it and you should do the best you can do. That way you don't have any regrets. So don't let your mind trick you, right? Take that physical step and actually write down the mathematics. I was studying for, for a test once long ago. It was a really big test. And, and I studied for this test for, I mean, I think it was over a year or about a year. And think about that. This is not just like a simple test. You spend a year studying for a test. So I have that here. I, I read this entire book. Great book. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to learn abstract algebra. It's probably the best book for beginners in abstract algebra, in my opinion. There's other great books. A lot of people like the Pinter book, the Galleon book, um, Hurstein. I mean, there's. I have them all. I collect math books. I have about 30 or more abstract algebra books. Why? Because I read this book. I read the entire book, every single word, and I probably did maybe 80% of the problems, 90%, okay? But it wasn't enough. I had to dig deeper. Why? Because I had to pass an exam that covered all of abstract algebra. And I passed it. Right? I passed it. I passed the exam and, you know, I knew it all, at least enough for the exam. So digging deep, dig deeper. The worst case is when you're in the situation where you felt like you have dug deep and you're still not succeeding. You know, you, you've, you've, you've put in the work. You've, you've worked every day. You've done the grind. You know, you're doing math every day for this class. You are doing all of the homework. You are going over all of the notes. You're going over all of the worksheets that the teacher has given you, but you still don't get it. In situations like that, the best thing you can do is go see your professor and just say something like, hey, why did I get, you know, these questions wrong on the test? You know, what, 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 what did I do wrong? Can you help me? Then when you see the solution, 99% chance the solution is going to use concepts that you learned in your class, right? If that's the case, you didn't dig deep enough. And that's, that's pretty much almost always been the case for me. Every time I've done that and I've, I've gone to my teacher's office and I've been like, can you help me do this problem? I don't understand. I look at the answer and I think, oh, no, 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 you know, I should have known how to do that. I should have known that was like the example in class. And I just feel like, no, what does that mean? That means I didn't dig deep. I didn't, I didn't pick up my pencil and I didn't physically do the work. I didn't actually sit down and, and, you know, do enough work. If it's not the case, if you feel like those ideas are beyond the scope of what was covered in your class, then you can ask the professor, hey, you know, well, what can I do next time so that I'm more prepared for the exam because these things weren't really in the book, in the homework, or in the notes. And this is very, very rare. This, this happened to me one time. It happened to me one time, and I remember getting my test back, and I just, it was all a foreign concept. And what made it worse was that the professor said, all of the solutions are easy. All of the problems have easy solutions. And they didn't, right? They didn't have easy solutions. So that's a rare case. And this was in graduate school, right? As an undergrad, though, more than likely, you just didn't dig deep enough. What do you think? Do you think you're digging deep? Do you think if you dig deep enough, you can do it? If you have any interesting comments or stories to share, leave them in the comment section because people read the comments. And so when you leave cool stories, especially the cool stories, the personal stories, things like that, I like reading them. People like reading them. It helps other people. It inspires people. People from all different walks of life watch these videos. You know, people from, from the high school level up to professors. So it helps people. It helps the world. Also, before I forget, uh, I do have a Patreon. So uh, if you feel like this content uh, provided value, consider supporting me on Patreon and becoming a patron. I think the smallest amount is pi, uh, so 3.14. And I have an Instagram where I post uh, random stuff. It's really fun because I can post all kinds of music and stuff. So yeah, get out there and do some math. And remember, dig deep.